You talk about this dirty green stuff all the time. I saw California just announced they're going to ban gas-powered vehicles from being sold by 2035. The sad part about these things is they usually catch on with other places. Is this thing catching on? Yeah, it sure is. New York, Washington State, a lot of other uh, states are actually starting to pass bills or they're, they're building uh, or they're creating those bills now, writing them. But it's not just the states, actually. So General Motors uh, has announced that they are going to stop selling or manufacturing gas-powered cars by 2035. Ford is going to do the same, although they're going to wait until 2040. Although in Europe, they're not going to sell any more of that stuff in, until 2035. So manufacturers are marching down this road, too, which is pretty crazy when you really start looking at how cars, these electric vehicles, function. Because they're not all they're, they're cracked up to be. And people are about to find that out in a very, very painful way. Brian, we talk about transition. I shouldn't say we. They talk about transition a lot. It's a transition. We're in a transition, which it's funny. If you dig into that, that it always is poor people dying. That's what transition means. But anyway, transitioning. Uh, what does this look like, though? Because these things, they sound so horrific, and they're not that far in the future. 2035 is not that far in the future. What, is, what does that mean to normal people? Well, it means if you go into a showroom starting 2035 and beyond, you unfortunately are going to not have an option of a gas-powered vehicle. It's going to be an electric vehicle. So you're going to have to come to the table with a lot more money because we know that, the, that electric vehicles cost a lot more than gas-powered cars. Different reasons for that, which we can get into. $66,000 is what they currently cost, but then you have to add in additional costs over the next couple of years with, of course, the increasing prices of batteries, which are going crazy in terms of the, the materials inside of those batteries, lithium and cobalt, none of which, by the way, we actually mine here. It's in places like the Congo with using child slave labor, but nevertheless, uh, the point is the price of those things are very expensive and god forbid you get into a car accident with one of those things dramatically went from 20 to 50 plus percent more expensive to repair that car and if it ain't under warranty you're buying a new battery pack which is going to run you about twenty thousand dollars which is quite amazing by the way when you think about it and then of course there's the issue of charging which i would love to get into because it's one of the best parts of this story Oh, please, go ahead, because one of my buddies has a Tesla, and he does, he enjoys his Tesla, but man, does he have charging stories. Please, take it away, Brian. Oh, my friend, this is so great. Okay, so there's level one, level two, and level three charging stations. Each of those offers owners different uh, sort of benefits, as it were. Level one is the lowest, it's least efficient. So you can buy one of these fancy cars, you plug it in into your house, basically one of those outlets, it's gonna take you four days to charge up your car. Congratulations, you're gonna work one day and then you're gonna come home and say, honey, I, I gotta take four days off to charge the car. All right, so that's one option. Level two, you're gonna be spending thousands more dollars to install a level two charger at your house. You're gonna have to have an electrician come. It's a very special piece of equipment, but your car may not actually charge fast enough to enjoy the benefits of that level two charger. So you can spend thousands of dollars and actually you're not gonna get much benefit, but maybe you do, maybe you get some benefit there, right? So we're looking at eight to 12 hours of charge time. All right, there are about uh, 35,000 of those charge stations all around the country. Well, what if you don't own a home and you're in an apartment complex or a condo building? Well, you better go to Walmart and stay overnight there because that's where those level two chargers are and it's gonna take you eight to 12 hours. Now, finally, there are these level threes. Uh, well, those are, are fine if your car can use them. The other piece here, Jesse, and I love this so much, batteries are finicky. They don't like to be charged when it's too cold and they don't like to be charged when it's too hot outside. So if you're in Alaska, sorry, or anybody in the wintertime, you're gonna have problems charging your car. Same thing in the summertime. Or if you live in Texas, Arizona, your car is not going to charge as efficiently. Also strange little things like the length of the cord from the power station to the car, ah, that's gonna change your charge time too. So all in, consumers have a lot to learn about these rigs, and I don't think they're gonna like it. Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History. Che Guevara, the latest episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.